Well, we welcome you again tonight. It's good to see all of you in uh, God's house tonight. Thank you for coming back to worship in our service this evening. As I announced this morning, we're glad to have uh, Brother Patterson with us tonight. I think he was preaching in Richmond, Virginia this morning, and uh, he's driven a little distance down to be with us tonight. We're always glad to have him. I think about Richmond, Virginia. There's a name that always pops into my mind, named John Jasper. Oh, John Jasper, pastor to Six Mount Zion Baptist Church in Richmond, Virginia. I've been there and uh, taken the tour of the church. They've actually got his whole long tailed black robe or, or coat uh, down in the basement and some of the memorabilia that uh, surrounded his life. Uh, they asked him one day, why did you call the church Six Mount Zion? He said, was there five other Mount Zion? I said, no, we just decided it sounded good. And we wanted to call it Six Mount Zion. Uh, he was a, a slave. And uh, during his time there in Richmond, Virginia, uh, slave masters took his wife away from him and never seen her again. And terrible days in the history of this nation. But uh, he was a tremendous preacher. He preached a sermon that became a very popular sermon on the sun do move. And preached it before the legislature in the, the state of Virginia. And a prominent lawyer from Virginia was seen walking down the street. He had his service on Sunday afternoon. And uh, somebody asked him, said, why do you go over there to hear that black man murder the king's English? He said, I don't go over there to hear him murder the king's English. I go over there to hear him talk about his Jesus. And uh, he was on his deathbed, and somebody came down to try to encourage him. He said, John, is there anything you need? He said, no, sir. He said, I'm walking up and down the side of the river looking for a place to cross. <laughs> what a man he was, and what a blessing, what a heritage he made, and what a legacy he has left. And I appreciate John Jasper. A lot of wonderful things happened in Richmond, Virginia in days gone by. And uh, I appreciate uh, that part of our country. I do appreciate Brother Patterson. I've known him. I was sitting here a while ago trying to figure out how many years I've known him. But uh, it goes way on up there. Uh, probably 35, 40 years, I guess, uh, we've known each other. And uh, I appreciate uh, his, the burden that he's carrying down through the years to help people who are either underprivileged or they got out in the world and got estranged from the Lord. And uh, he has spent much of his life trying to bring people back into a right relationship with the Lord. And we're glad he could be with us tonight. Uh, you may have to uh, get some glasses if you wear glasses to see him. He's so small, but I pray that you'll be able to look at him tonight. Brother Patterson, good to have you with us. Come and make yourself a I, uh, I think when I first came here, there was a guy named Shark working here. Is that his name, Shark? Yeah. Had a pink shirt on. I still remember that dude. Uh, looked like Roy Acuff or some of them dudes. I'm over here in Matthew chapter 10. Uh, Matthew, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Of course, you know the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Four is the number of earth. You got four seasons, four, four books. Study you your Bible, you read each book, and it has a different theme. But over here in Matthew chapter 10, uh, and Mark, what did I say, Matthew? Mark, Mark, Mark. Uh, Mark, chapter, uh, Mark chapter 10, our Lord is going to make some miracles, and, and, and somebody's messing with a man. And Jesus is, Jesus is going to speak up for him. And I'm glad your pastor talked about the fallen, and I'll tell you more about that in a moment. But uh, and Jesus, uh, Jesus stood for the fallen, and he stood for, he stood for the accused, and he, and he took care of business. Over here in uh, Mark, chapter, uh, uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 46, and they came to Jericho, and it's a city outside of Jerusalem, a little more like the ghetto type. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a disciple could have been an apostle, but, a, uh, but an apostle could not, uh, an apostle had to be a disciple, but sometimes disciples were not apostles. An apostle was one who had had to see in Christ. And Paul saw him. That's how he got in. He saw him in Acts chapter 9. 
And then they came to Jericho. I'll let you, gotta let you know I know something. I mean, he knows a lot. I gotta let him know I know a little bit. Now, I love picking on Dr. Beatty. And they came to Jericho, and as they went out of Jericho with a disciple, the great multitude of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the uh, highway side begging. I love that song. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him to, to should hold his peace, be quiet. This is church time. Get out of here. But he cried the more. I like that. He cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still. That's, that, that's the kind of savior you have. He, he stands still he, when he hears your cry. He wants, to, he wants to help you. And he stood still and commanded him to be called. Bring him here. And they called blind body, and they called the, the blind men, saying, Be of good comfort, arise, he calleth thee. And he, casting his garments, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered him and said, What will that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, Trinity there, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, capital Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, He didn't have to pray about it, by the way. He's going to take care of business. When you call upon him, he's going to take care of business. But he wants you to call upon him. And Jesus said unto him, call, uh, Go thy way, thy faith, not your water, not your money, but your faith, hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Father, thank you for the word of God. Help us tonight. Help me to help your people. Thank you for this brief time uh, sharing some words tonight. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Well, it's a joy to be back here with you. I'm going to speak to you tonight in a little, little bit. I'll just keep a little update real fast. Uh, I've had a, uh, I got a car wreck tore me up about two years ago. They plowed in the back of me about 45 miles an hour and tore up my spine. And I, I just started walking again. I got to get some more weight off. I want to get down to about 250, my ro roll off weight. And, uh, but I kept having these little uh, strokes on my left side. My left side is uh, numb right now, my face and everything right now, but I'm okay. I know who I am. And, uh, but they, uh, they stuck me in the MRI for an hour. And they asked me, they said, do you want some music? I said, well, I said, uh, they say Motown and, uh, and, uh, and gospel are twins. I put some Motown on me. And so I was listening to Diana and David Ruffin going at it on uh, my girl in that, in that MRI. And uh, at, at, at Beach Whalen Jennings. And uh, no, I'm just kidding. But I'm in there for an hour. And, and I've never been in one. I said, good. And, then, and the thing's right there by your nose, about that big. You know, you can't get scared. You might as well just suck it up and go. I got in there. They pulled me out of that thing. And, and, uh, and here comes a Korean doctor in my room. And he's, uh, he's jumping. He said, Mr. Patterson, I find out why you're having these strokes. And you, you, your legs, you can't move. And you think you're having a stroke. He said, you got two nerves wrapped up from, from your spine. It's all twangled up and so forth. I said, can you fix it? I said, I, I said, don't, don't, don't make me paralyzed. I don't want to be par paraplegic for Jesus. And, uh, and he starts laughing. He said, I'm a Korean. I'm a Christian. And I said, I don't care, but are you a good doctor? And uh, <laughs> put the cheese on the pizza. We've got to get down to bed. That's, that's how I talked to him. He said, I like you. You're funny. You're funny. I said, well, you're funny too, but I like, can, are you good? And, uh, and I said, you're Korean. You must like Douglas MacArthur. And then he jumps about two feet off the ground and starts screaming, I love Douglas MacArthur. He, I said, what for him? You'd be speaking German. And, uh, and uh, so he, uh, he wants to operate on me. And so, but I have to have his uh, sleep test. They got to put you down, check how many times you breathe and all that jazz. And uh, July 24th. So I'm out on the road to about, uh, July, uh, about the July 20th. And so I'll be heading back home. Uh, this week I'll be at... Uh, uh, I'll be at a, a men's home up in uh, Richmond, about uh, 35, 40 men. I'll be with them all week preaching to them. Then uh, friends of mine run that and ask me to come up there. I kind of put all this together real fast. And I'm going back to work. I'm building another home, then a men's home, then a women's home. I'm looking for property. I got a phone. I just started praying. And I, I talked to God before I talked to man. I do pray once in a while. I said, Lord, I said, I need some help on this. I'm tired of working on my own. Can you help me out? I, I ain't lying. Yeah, uh, I got a phone call three days later from a guy. He said, this Jack Patterson? I said, yeah, who's calling me? He said, hey, this is so-and-so. He said, I hear you're starting to hold another men's home. I said, yeah, I'm going to start it up. About, man, about 10, about 12 guys. I van load, and, and I need a van. And the next day, Michael Pearl from No Greater George sent me a van. He said, hey, you heard you're going to start a men's home. I got a van. I'll give it to you. I'll come get it. And I flew down there. My niece works for Delta. She got me a nice ticket. I said, get me in first. I'll put you back in the wheel. She got me in first class. And so I don't suffer well at 70, amen. And, uh, 
So I get over there, and, uh, and, and so I, I, we, we got calling, and this uh, guy called me on the phone. He said, uh, I said what, are you, he said, what are you looking for? I was looking for a house with a barn. I had a place out in Othello, Washington, an old farmer looked like Fred Sanford. And he gave me an old, he gave me an old farm. He looked, he looked just like Fred Sanford. Never washed his car or nothing, but he, he owned apple orchards and everything else. And most of those guys are millionaires. And so I didn't get in his business. But he gave me a, he gave me a 20 acre ranch for nothing for 14 years. And that's where Reclamation Ranch was at. And over 700 men came through it. 700. I got 40 of them in the ministry today. Missionaries, some in prison, and I still don't give up on them. I like it, Brother Olaf said, he says, I'll give up on you three days after you're dead. And uh, so, uh, so I, he, until I, he called me, he said, what are you looking for? I said, he said, well, I'm a real estate agent. I said, how do you, well, how do I know you? And uh, I said, what do you want to do? What, when you're calling me about something, he said, well, you helped my son 25 years ago. And he's on the mission field. I said, wow. Tell him I said hi to you. And he told me his name. I said, I remember him. He said, uh, he said, I buy property and chop it up and sell it for profit and so forth. He said, I want to help you. I said, uh, so my money's tight, but I, well, I, I'm going to, you know, God, God, God got it. We'll, we'll take, and I don't want no payments right now. And, uh, and so uh, he said, uh, I'm looking for a place, and I think I can uh, get you in there and so forth. And so he, so he called me about once a week now and find a fine. What about this? What about this? I don't want to be by the city. I want to be by the highway. I, I want to be by a hospital. I got to take a guy there. I said, uh, I'm looking for places there. And so, uh, so he's working on that right now. And so I got about a month and a half to get my act together. And I'm going back to work. And uh, I got judges calling me. I got, uh, I got a thousand phone numbers in my phone. I never throw a phone number away. And uh, I, got, uh, uh, I got my young men calling me. One guy works for, but a lot of old my guys, all of my old guys been through here, Evans Prague and so forth. They're probably watching tonight. He mentioned my name on there. I said, hey, FBI looking for you. And, uh, but uh, the name of the game is finished in the job. And we're, uh, we're dying with this thing called soul winning. We're dying with this thing on bringing back the lame, bring back the banished. When they make mistakes, get rid of them. No, go get them again. Aren't you God that God didn't do that to you? Amen. And such were some of you. I don't care. Whatever you, whatever you pass by the bend below off, he used to say, your, spe- your future is still spotless. And so I got to raise some money to get an operation and my social security to get. I said, Karen, we'll take care of it. I'll, I'll go sell drugs or something. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. And, uh, but uh, my guys, I said, oh, we're going to help you out. Yeah, okay. But uh, no, that'll be down for two months after that. So, but about two months from now, uh, after I get the sleep test done, I'll, I'll get that operation. I think uh, I'll probably be uh, August 1st. So I, I got just about all this month filled up. I filled it up in three days and go, I got always the joy to get back here. So, uh, but I, uh, but I'm preaching the message around the, around the country that I've, I've used it and it's, uh, it's helped a lot of people about this thing, the Lord taking the beggars and doing something with them. Yeah. That blind Bartimaeus, that blind Bartimaeus and, uh, but God got a hold of them and what's going on. I'm going to give, when, you, when I give you the illustration, I want to give to you, I won't preach to you long. I'm hungry tonight and I get hungry. I get grouchy and uh, I get grouchy. And uh, but no, I uh, I got something on my elbow. Every time I bend, my mouth opens, and I'm working on that. And so you know, and uh, I'm still looking. Those cops are probably looking for that gray Buick outside. And uh, you know, I heard about the guy going on the road the other day, doing 80 miles an hour, and the cop pulled over. And uh, he said, "Hey," he said, "Man, you're doing 80 miles an hour." He said, well, "I thought what what the speed limit said." No, that's that that's uh, that's that's a. Uh, it says 80 miles an hour. He said, he let him go. He said, he told his wife, I'm glad he didn't catch me on Highway 120, amen. And, uh, but tonight I was on about 150, but, uh, but I got here. I, I, let me pray for you and get my mind on the message tonight. I want to help you tonight in your Christian life. And it, it just, uh, the, woman and, and the woman who got me reading biographies was a dear saint at Brent Baptist Church, uh, Dr. Ruckman Church named Mrs. Sipes. She got a guy named Sam Gipp, Lonnie Taylor, Rick Sow, and Jack Patterson. She used to bring us biographies in Bible school and read them. And I got to read Bray and John Hyde. I got to reading about uh, Jonathan Goforth, read about uh, Peter Waldo, these other guys, church history people. Read, read, read church history. History is his story. It's his story. A uh, president from years past was nervous walking through a crowd one day, or his wife was rather, and uh, she said, uh, the crowd is real rowdy. He said, yeah, but we're going we're to get through it. He said, but we're going to do something different today. He said, well, what I want to do is get to that crowd. We're going to be guarded by the Secret Service. But I, uh, I want to do something. I don't want to be in a hurry. He said, I want to walk slowly through the crowd. 
I want to walk slow. He said, I want to walk slow through the crowd, and I want to look him in the eye, and I want to smile at him. Very profound statement. Because I see this story right here, and I see the Lord doing the same thing. He wasn't in a hurry to get where he's going. And far too many of us go way too fast to get where we're going and forget about that blind Bartimaeus. And so I, uh, I'm going to talk to you tonight just to reach it about 15, 20 minutes on this subject, walking slowly through the crowd. Walking slowly through the crowd. And uh, I, uh, I, I see the blind Bartimaeus, I talk to them, I, my, uh, I, I, I travel and, and, and I, I got people who want me to help them. And I, I, I'm, 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 I'm preaching about uh, oh, probably about seven homes now around the country that I go to all the time. I, I can't do it myself, so I go there and get my help. And I'm bringing, I'm bringing some older guys back, and they're, they're quitting their job to come back and help me and working all that stuff out. So, uh, but this, this realtor, I, he don't want me to say his name. He don't, want, he, don't want, he don't want nothing in print what he's doing for me. That's called charity. Doing something that no one knows about, and you're giving them charity. That's that's what the word charity means. And uh, but I said I'll do that, my brother. And uh, uh, tonight I got I got three Amish guys that came to my program. One of them came here. Uh, I asked him to. I, I think he came here. And uh, all three of them all three of them come off of meth row. Twenty twenty five years ago. And so. Uh, I, uh, I went to court, Brother Beatty, 17 times from Alabama to Indiana to this guy's court date. And this, and this prosecutor kept, kept canceling me out. Kept can and when the, when the court date came up, I canceled the meeting. I wanted this guy. I knew I had him. I like what Lester Roloff said about Bill Henderson. He said, I, I, he came to help him. He said, why do you want to help this meet the jailbird? He said, I believe God got his hand on him. God was in the Tennessee Temple, pastor of church for 35 years outside of Atlanta, Georgia. And, uh, and they're starting another men's home, and he's 80. I said, good night, Bill. I said, what are you doing? He said, man, I want to finish. I said, yeah, I mean, I'm 70. I'm a young buck, man. And, uh, and, uh, and long story short, I went, went, went and got this guy. This guy was an Amish now. All these guys are Amish. And so uh, they said, Jack, we want, you to, we want to open up our stores to you. We're going to build you one more building. They built me five buildings never charged me a dime. Never charged a dime. 40 by 80 buildings furnished. I woke, everything, everything. And I gave some of them away, sold some, put the money back in the work. And uh, I, I don't take a salary. I make my money preaching. That's, my, that's, that's how I make my money. I, 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 don't, I don't do that. And that's, that's what I want to do. And so this guy came in. He runs a concrete business and so forth. Now they all three have their own homes. They run 40 guys each in a home. That's a good-sized home. And he said, the army still, they don't want them to have a, a name that they bring attention to themselves. So they use scripture for their home. The first home is called Psalm 51. I preach there all the time. Now somebody's letting them use a 200 acre uh, farm with a big dorm already built on it. And they've already remodeled the whole thing out of oak. I hate them. I hate their guts. I kill them. I hate them. I hate them. But they got a nice place. But that's it. Do it. You know what they're doing? And, and, they're, and they're teaching, and they're teaching uh, salvation by grace. I love it. And I go there and preach for them and so forth. They said, Brother Jack, I don't want to like you. I said, you run it your race like you want to run it. And so I, I kept him out of prison and so forth. And uh, he sa I said, look, I said, I love you. I said, I'll never talk about that stuff. Then there's Ephesians 6, 12. And then there's uh, Romans 10, 13 over in Ohio. And their homes, the Amish guys are hearing the word of God preach, just like you hear tonight. All because of, they come through Reclamation Ranch. Because I put, I put some tools in their hands. See, I don't just get them off of drugs. That's the easy part. Getting off of booze and drugs. Now you got to get inside the Word of God and dig it and dig it and dig it. And so that's the name of the game. But I'm, I'm going to talk to you this next few moments on walking slowly through the crowd. I, uh, I, I get going so much, and I, of course, I'm on the streets. I, I go to Columbus, Ohio. I go there often because it's only four hours from my house. I go there and stay at a motel, and, and uh, they, I, they won't let me buy my room. They buy my room. I said, look, I'll pay my own way there and uh, so forth. And, uh, but uh, they go, they got a men's home and a, and a women's home. Columbus, Ohio is about three Detroits. That's how bad Columbus, Ohio is with the drugs. I, uh, I, I shouldn't have said that, but, but I, 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 I'll say it anyways. I got a girl there helped out. Her, her daddy, well, I just said he was one of the officials of Columbus. And he knew Lester Roloff. I called him. He said, never call me again about my daughter. I'm done with her. 
and he hung the phone up on me. That was about eight years ago. That's what we're at tonight. I'm done with my daughter, but I'm glad the mission was there to take her. Took her in, loved her, helped her out. And so Brother Job and his wife, and I go there and help them a lot. And he said, well, Jack, what are you going to do with your mission? And I said, I'm going to grow some crops. I got, uh, and, and this farmer said, Jay, Jack, you're going to gotta, you got to get a truck. So I don't, I, I don't have a pickup truck. So my brother passed it away. And his family said, hey, why don't you come get your brother's truck? So my niece flew me to Texas and got the truck, but needs some work on it. So I got to get uh, four ball joints, shocks, and another company's already donated brand new Cooper tire. It has no rust on it. And I've already had two offers to sell it. That's going to be my new ranch truck. I like it. I'm going to give me some leather seats. I'm going to lean in there in, in the hood, you know. And uh, so I'm a, I need to get a trailer with a winch on it. And then I already got two Amish uh, food feeds to look. When you come over here, we're going to load you up with about $10,000 worth of food. But you know what I'm going to do with that? I'm going to have my guys feeding the homeless on the streets. And uh, I know some of them are different out there. You get not hang to yourself. But let me finish. I mean, just uh, give you, give you some, 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 some thoughts here tonight of walking slowly through the crowd. I, uh, I remember uh, uh, that the Pacific Garden Mission many years ago. I worked for Harry Shaw on the air, and, and finally I want to do my, uh, I'm writing my book now called Every Day a Diary. There's no mudslinging in my book. It's all about how God took a, kn a knucklehead. I used to uh, rob trains or stole cars, uh, and my dad was a, a thug, and uh, my, my father grew up, in, my father worked for Jimmy Hoffa in the Union. I didn't, because I, I was just a kid, eight, nine years old. I met him when I was about 15 or 16, but I never built my ministry on knowing him. That, that, I built my ministry on knowing Jesus Christ. But my father's uh, half-brother, I knew my father's uncle, he was connected to Babyface Nelson. And my father's best friend, which I met him, his name is Babe Simon. He was connected to the Jews that ran Detroit in the 1920s. And so I was born in 52, and I got in, 10 of us, and three of us, three of us got saved, and, and two of us went in the Ministry of Reconciliation. My brother John just died. He, uh, he started missions all over Mexico. So two of us are trying to do something with, with, with the life. And I get a young man, a young girl, and I ask him, I said, what, what are you doing for eternity's sake? What do you want to do with your life? I'm going to go get a job. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get that. Yeah, but how are you going to get there? And I get these young men and, uh, and, and get them in and, and get them out and so forth. And uh, I don't want to keep them long. I want to keep them 90 days and get them back working somewhere, send them back home and, and a factory and, uh, and teach them things, basketball and everything else. And so that's why I'm getting myself in. I let myself get the full 40. I, I'm ashamed of that. I'm ashamed. I joke about being heavy, but I, I, I was stupid. But it, it, wrecked my, it, it wrecked my health a little bit and so forth. But, I, hey, but I'm not quitting. I'm, not, I'm walking slower, but I'm going forward. I'm not going sour, and I ain't backing up. I'm going forward and uh, so forth. And so uh, I, uh, I got the Pacific Garden Mission, and, I, and uh, Harry Chandelier said, uh, he said, I he said, you used to work for Lester Roloff? He said, yeah. He said, well, you're, uh, you're, uh, uh, you're, you're more than a, uh, 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 a supervisor. Won't you be my director at the mission? I said, man, that's a lot of hours and so forth. Said, I don't know if I can. He said, I'll double your salary. I said, I'll take it. So I just felt led of the Lord to take that raise in, in Jesus' name. And, uh, and I stayed there for about a year. And I came, I came in one day, and, uh, and, I, and I saw this old guy that's on, on the street. He, he was, hardly spoke any English. He was Italian, and the voice from Sicily, so, so, Sicilian, and, uh, and Sicily. And so I, I get a hold of him. I said, uh, I said, what's your name? He told me his name. I said, what's wrong with you? I said, I, I said I'll tell you what. I said, uh, you're, you're a good cook, but you're a drunk. I'm going to put you on the full floor for two weeks, and all you do is sleep, and they're going to bring you food three times a day. And when you wake up in two weeks, you're going to see me back in my office, we're going to talk about your life. He come down there now. This time his eyes are wide open. He's uh, clean cut. He could, got a shower and uh, vomit on him and so forth. He's about seventy years old. And uh, Sicily, I can't get the word out right. And uh, and Sicilian and that that that, that mob stuff. And uh, I grew up with those guys in shops. I know a lot of those guys. But anyways, I, I left them alone. And uh, he, I said, uh, you know what? I said, uh, let me let me let me call. Uh, let me let, let me call somebody for you. I said, I think I want to I want to. So I called up Brother Olaf. I said, roll off. I said, I got a guy here for you. He said, when are you coming home? I said, well, I will get down there before the rapture. And uh, I said, I got a guy here. He's a, he's a cook. He said, send him. He didn't say what he was, what color he was, how tall he was. He said, send him. I said, well, I got to tell you who he is. He just said, click. <laughs> and uh, so I called him back. I said, I, I got to let you know who this guy is. You just can't tell him to get to work. He needs some rest. And, and uh, he said, how old is he? He said, I'm busy, boy. I got I to go. I said, hey, Brother Olaf, come on, listen to me. I, I, I need to get this stuff. This guy is a five-star chef. He said, get him on the plane today. I said, why? 
He said, I got, the mayor, I got the governor of Texas coming here in two weeks. I want to see if this guy can cook. All right, I'll fly him down there. He, he didn't pay for the ticket. Guess who paid for the ticket? I paid for the ticket. I got him down there. Uh, three days later, he called me back. He said, Jack, where'd you get this guy? I said, roll up. I picked him up off the street on State Street. He said, uh, he said I, I brought some quail, and he cooked that quail. He said, he cooked the best quail I've ever had in my life. I said, I know, I'm taking care of you. I'm looking at it after you. And the next week, he cooked for the governor. The governor wanted to take him to Austin to cook for him. But the old man wanted to go back home. Where do you find those guys? You got to walk slowly through the crowd. You know why your preacher is a good soul? I know he and I, we spar a lot, we cut on each other all the time, but he's a soul winner. He's got an eye for sinners. He's got an eye for, and a lot of you have an eye for broken people. I, uh, I got a missionary tonight in the Philippines who used to build houses for the mob in New York City. I got another guy who's, uh, and, 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 and as of two states, I never preached that. And I want to go there before the, if the Lord let me live long enough. I want to go to Alaska and Hawaii, and I'll have all 50 states. I got all 48 states at working for Howard Anderson College. But I've taught those young people at nighttime, when we go on tour, we're going to go to rescue missions. I've been to Fanny Crosby's mission. I've been to the mission down to L.A. And when those kids come back off a tour, Brother Beatty, they saw something. And lamentation says, my eye affects my heart. What are you doing, Brother Jack, at 70? I'm walking slowly through the crowd. I was in Asheboro, uh, North Carolina here, but I'm passing through, seeing my friend Tom Cochran. A little girl caught me at the gas station pump. She said, hey, mister, you got $10? I said, what do you want it for? She said, heroin. I said, uh, I said, let me go get you some cheeseburgers and get you something to eat. Will you give me $10? I said, I'll tell you what i do. I'll give you the $10 if you listen to what I'm going to tell you. I went and got her some cheeseburgers. I sit over here by here, and I, get, I, I gave her the gospel of Christ. And I called, I called a few numbers that down there that can help her, some churches. Nobody answered. And I, I gave it. And she said, uh, I said, you know what? I'm not going to buy dope tonight. I'm going to go home tonight. I said, I like what you said tonight, and I can do something in my life. I don't know what ever happened to her. But I believe in winning souls. But I, I believe in having eyes, an eye open for people, especially pastor's kids. I don't care what they've done. And uh, Brother Wolf had a way for that. He, I mean, he, t he took a guy back. He took a guy back over 40 times. Over 40 times. I said, Brother Wolf, when are you going to give up? I said, I ain't going to give up. He said, Jesus never gave up on me. And here the Lord got a hold of an old Lester Roloff who never smoked or drank, but he helped the generation who did. All I'm trying to tell you, i uh, walking slowly through the crowd. He said, we're, gonna, we're not going to hustle through this. We're not going to go over. He said, we're going to look him in the eye and we're going to smile. His name is J.F. Kennedy and Jackie. A profound statement. And I sometimes walk too fast through the crowd. I want to get home. I want to get this done. I got to get this done. I got to get, I'm, am I doing all right tonight? You want to get this done. You want to get this done. But wait, but what about that little boy? Yeah, what about the bums at the gas station? What about the little girl at the, at the corner looking for a dollar? Well, why don't you go over and talk to her? I'm in Detroit all the time. I've, I've, been, I've been home in Detroit now since I left Alabama. I sold Alabama. I probably should have kept it. That's here and there. But I got the money, a few bucks in the bank to, to, to buy furniture for the new dorm. I'm not touching it but I, I'm out raising other money for it. And uh, I, I want to, I and by the way, when those kids come in, they got, they got brand new stuff. They got new mattresses. They got, I don't want no hand-me-downs. I want the best of the best for them. Amen, just like when your kids come or when you come. Uh, Roloff had a guy one time, he, come, <laughs> he had a guy in there, 75 years old, he told me. And he was, he's smoking crack. I said, 75, he needs to go to stick in morgue at 75 and die. He said, no, he, he come in and he helped him. He said, that's the oldest guy he ever helped. He was 75 years old. I see sometimes preachers walking way too fast for the crowd. They got their preaching voice, you know, open their body. Well, they got their preaching voice, but they got their two, three hundred dollar shoes, but they forgot about walking slowly through the crowd. I wish you could have met the other side of a Jack Howes or a Lester Roloff or a Pete Ruckman. 
I met him. I know some don't like him. He taught me the King James Bible. You look him on, on YouTube. He teaches you he teach that Bible. Dispensation. He'll, he'll lay that Bible out to you. He put truth inside this little Detroit boy that made me last all these many years. This book right here. This Brother Wolf said, the, the book will give you the right look. Amen. And, uh, and what I'm trying to tell you tonight is I, I got a hold of that thing. He said, Jack. He said, Jack. He said, it's hard to tell these men Jesus loves them on an the empty stomach. And he threw 20 bucks on me. And I went down to Whataburger. That, was a, not, that hamburger changed your life now. It's called a Whataburger. Amen. I feel the spirit moving over there. Amen. All right. And uh, you cut that baby in half and wrap them up. And I was, I, was handing out, uh, I was handing out cheeseburger. And you know what old brother, we called him Brother Pete. He said, you know, Brother Jack, it's hard to tell a man Jesus loves him on an empty stomach. That's deep. God is my witness. The Lord, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going next week when I, I'm going to be home next, after this next week. I'll be home for about two weeks. I'm, I'm going down to a little Greek diner, and I bring it here. I, I'll give you the recipe. I'm going to learn how to make that Greek that Greek soup, Al, Albanian uh, Greek Albanian soup. They're Catholic. They're not mother. They eat pork, you know. And uh, and so he said, Jack. He said, you come in and I'll teach you how to make these soups. Offer used to come get ham sandwiches. I, I, I ran the gas station across the street. I ran I ran the midnight ship at 14, 15 years old. I told him I was 21. Oh, yeah, I'm 21. I was born mother at 14. I was six foot eight, stealing, robbing cars, whatever. I'd borrow the people's car, left it there. I'd go out there in the hood and go party and bring a car back the next morning. But if I got my, my boss was taking down the ometer, <laughs> he'd catch me every time. And, uh, but I'm going to learn those two soups. I'm going to take them to the street. And you know what my guys are going to do when they come in? I'm going to take them down there and learn how to feed the homeless. Put out some lights and go do some street preaching downtown Detroit in the hood where I grew up at. Oh, man, that's dangerous places down there. Yeah, I know what you're doing. You get some wisdom about it. I got a guy named Joe Hicks. He's been there for 40 years, never, never, been, never been touched one time. Joe Hicks has been down there. He's, he goes all over the country with the bikers. I'm talking about walking slowly through the crowd, walking slowly through the crowd. And, uh, and you see a preacher, just used to help him. I, I, was, I was at a gas station, oh, probably a couple years ago, and, and a guy yelled at me. He said, hey, brother, what you doing in this neighborhood? I said, well, what, I, said, I grew up around here. What? He said, aren't you afraid to be here? I said, no, nah, I'm not afraid to be here. I got the Holy Ghost and my little buddy in my back pocket. He's 38 years old, amen. And, um, and, and he's holy, amen. He's holy, he's holy. And, and he's got a little twin brother. He's 32 in the other pocket. It, it, and, and that's all I can tell you. I can't tell you no more and uh, so forth. I'm not a gangster, but I, I got to take care of my wife's husband. And, uh, you know, and so, uh, and so uh, he, he looks at me. He said, man, this is the hood, brother. You can't be down here. I said, what are you doing here? What, what are you know, I'm, I'm from here. I said, well, I'm from here too. Forget about it. I had to talk like I was in New York, you know. And that was eight years ago. He's the PA guy in our church. He looked like Smokey Robinson. I said, hey, man, you, can you sing like Smokey? No, I wish I had his money, man. Got his kids back. Works at Ford, uh, Ford 52 bucks an hour. And he and I will go soul winning. So, hey, Jack, man, come on, man, for real. I said, uh, we're going to go soul winning. You're buying, right? I mean, you're buying today? Oh, hello. And we go down the hood and go soul winning, win people to Christ. And many men at a gas station. One word, and the place is all packed out. He said, what do you say? Sometimes we just walk too fast through the crowd. You should never walk out of this church without gospel tracts in your pocket. I'll, I'll give you to Dr. Beatty. I'll get him some. He wants some. This is good. Treasure in heaven, true story. One of our guys were going to Iraq. 90 guys were in the, on the runway going to Iraq. The plane blew up. The dad goes to Mount Airy, North Carolina. He was the Green Beret sniper. He wrote this about his son. Every military guy I meet, I gave him one of these. How his son went to heaven on, on, on the, air, on the air, uh, tarmac. We walked too slow. Good place to go to a funeral. Pass them out, give them tracks. <laughs> Got a phone call one night from a girl. And uh, a, a, a guy called me, and this girl's in trouble. I said, where's she at? I, she said, she, she's in New York. I said, I got, a, I got a church up there. I got a friend up there. I, said, I, got, I know people who know people. So I called the people who I know people, know people, I called them. I said, who are they? Any business? I bet I call them. I, I, I'm a member. I'm Baptist Mafia. I don't tell my resources. And I'm picking on you. And uh, so I, I said, look, this girl's a, a troubled girl. She's, she's in trouble. Somebody knows her that knows me. I always want to make sure she, who I help. And, you know, I mean, they're, they're straight and they're not, you know, mine's all right. You got to watch all that stuff out. And so this girl's in trouble, but she's, she needs to hide from some people. 
So this preacher gets a couple in his church, a real good young people, and they keep this girl for three months. They didn't bring her, they had her on church, they watched her online, they didn't want her in an area, she was in some trouble. The people were not looking for that, they never did find out why. And she said, you know, at the end of this three months, she said, you know, I, I, got, my, I got the drugs out of my system, and, I, you know, they got her some medication, and they fed her, and they preached the Word of God, and showed her video. She said, at the end of the three months, she said, I, I'm okay. And then she finally told her who she was. She said, I want to call that talk to that guy who sent me here to you. You, you folks really helped me out. You got to be set up for that. I understand that. And she, he said, okay. So they called me and said, hey, Brother Patterson, so and so. I said, yeah, I remember me. How you doing? How's the work going? She said, yeah, we just built a new building. And hey, this girl's leaving, but she wanted to say hi to you. And said, how'd she do? She said, she did great. Man, she got saved, grew in grace, and doing fine. You see, the ministry's four things its head, its hands, its heart, its heels. The 4 H Club. Head for knowledge. Hands for working, heart for emotion, feet for movement. I want all four, but I don't have all four. I have three, sometimes I have two. I guess you ain't going to have just one. You know what I'm talking about. You got knowledge to talk to somebody about business, talk about the king's business. She gets on the phone. He said, hey, Brother Patterson, this you? I said, yes, it is. I said, hey, so-and-so, and call me, and I know her name. I won't say it. She says, uh, I, said, I just want to tell you I got saved here, and I, I didn't know I could be saved forever. I got a testimony right here in my Bible. I wrote it down in there, my original autograph right here. And uh, she said, I just, need, I just want to tell you, thank you for I go. She said, by the way, I just want to tell you who I'm related to. I said, it don't matter. I just I wanted to help you. Well, Sammy the Bull Gabano is my granddad. That was John Gotti's hit man. He said, uh, he knows who I, he knew, I mean, my mother and so forth. I said, what are you going to do with your life? He said, I'm going to go find a church somewhere out of New York, and I'm going to get my life straightened out. I'm going to do something with my life. He said, these people you sent me to for the last three months, and she said, I woke up. I woke up. That's for your generations right now. She's asleep. I ain't going to go into politics. Of course, poly means many and ticks mean bloodsuckers. Amen. And uh, so forth. And so I'm, I want to help them. But I'm going I'm to wrap it up. I'm going I'm to finish with this. I'm, done. I'm not done, but I'm going to finish it up with this. Many years ago, I, I, uh, there was a, a gang fight in our home, and uh, Dr. Beeson Vick was a, was a great soul-winning pastor, and a gang fight took place. And uh, long story short, uh, my little niece and nephew never came out of the fire. The house was set on fire, my, my, my own family. It drives me to this day. They went to, uh, they went to uh, Temple Baptist Church, my brother, my sister, my mom, and all them. And uh, I made a profession about seven, eight years old. Listen to me. Don't you ever get into some little kid and say, say this little prayer after me. He better understand that gospel. He better understand why Christ Jesus died for his sins. And it ain't those words that save you. It's that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. At 18 years old, I believed on him. I believe it literally changed my life. And uh, long story short, Brother Beatty and my sister was in and out of mental wards for many years over those kids, over those kids, over those kids, over those kids. I, uh, I, I, I came home one time from Bible school and I got talking to her and I said, uh, I said, Gladdy, why don't you go tell somebody your burden? Why don't you go tell somebody what you're going through? And she would literally look in the newspaper and find where people had died and go, there and, and go to their funeral. And she had a picture of her little boy and little girl, Johnny and Linda, at four and five years old when the fire took place. And she said, Jack, she said, then I became a soul winner. But they kept asking me, where are the kids at? I had to tell them they were in heaven. But I didn't, I didn't know how to tell them. So she had to learn to get a gospel tract. She said, people taught me how to, how to uh, talk. And that's my sister talking. Oh, street girl. And she put her fist upside my face about 20 times. I was about 14 years old. She put a jet. She tried to give me a great awakening. And I, and, but uh, I finally got woke up, and she was just so thankful I got saved. But push, push, push to years later, she, she'd come in out of a mental ward and, and uh, out of uh, Millersville, Georgia. And I said, Gladdy, I said, you, you need to talk about your birth. You know, never allow your hurt, uh, hurt, you, uh, hurt others, but uh, m m allow your hurt to he help somebody else. She literally led people to Christ like crazy. And long story short, she looks at her, her husband and says, uh, hey, Phil, you want, are you going to go to heaven? He said, uh, I'm mad at God for taking my two kids. 
This was when he was 65 years old, 70 years old. That happened when he was 25. He said, you want to see those two kids again? Then you got to get saved. And Joe Arthur, her, my sister's pastor, was standing right there. And my brother-in-law said, well, I, I, don't have a, I don't have a pew. I don't have no. He said, Joe, Joe said, well, bless God, there's a chair. He kicked the chair over to him. My brother-in-law gets on his knees, and he asked Jesus Christ to save him. No teeth and no hair. And, he's, uh, he's, uh, and he's, uh, it, it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. And he, he called me a couple of days, hey, Jack, hey, 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 I'm going to heaven now. I've never heard my, my, never heard my brother-in-law talk about that. He said, I'm going to heaven now. He didn't know what was up, but he didn't know that he had trusted Christ. He said, man, I can't wait for you to come over here. I was in Alabama at the time. I want you to come see me and so forth. And so I guess six or seven, eight months passed on by. They put him in uh, learning the Bible, and he was uh, working at the church. My niece is uh, Joe Arthur's uh, bookkeeper and uh, his daughter and so forth. And uh, so I come over there, and he said, uh, he said, Jack, what's up? What's this stuff about soul winning? What, what, where's all that about? I said, well, that's what we try to do to get you to, you know, we'll lead you to Christ. We'll lead you to, well, you got anything I can use to pass them out? So I gave him a pack of uh, This Is Your Life by Jack Chick. I gave him a whole, whole pack full. He sticks him in his little army coat that he had from you know, Korea. He kept it all those years. That's all he wore, old Korean war vet. He took him over to Iraq War, he took, he, and uh, he was on the boat on the way over, and then, you know, 100 hours over, the, the, the war was over. But he, he wanted to go. We're at a Waffle House. Oh, well, I don't like going to Waffle House at 2 in the morning to help us. And uh, I'll leave that joke alone. But anyways, uh, I'm sitting next to my brother-in-law. And uh, I, uh, I said, uh, he said, come on, man, let's go get something to eat. We're sitting next to you, you know, and we're he and I talking, you know. And, uh, uh, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I gave him a pack of those uh, Just As Your Life. I started talking to the guy at the cash register. He said, hey, man, where are you from? He said, George, what are you, a preacher? So forth. Yeah, I'm a Baptist preacher. By the way, are you a Christian? No, not really. I said, are you saved? No, no. I said, hey, Philip, give me one of those uh, tracks. He looks at my brother. My brother looks at me. He said, I'm not giving you any of them. You got a whole case in the car. Go get your own. These are going out tonight at the shop. I about fell off the, I, I about fell off the chair. I'm out of the chair. I said, Philip, you got to be kidding me. He said, I'm going to start telling people about Jesus. I started laughing. I started crying. I was choking on a stick and toast. I couldn't, I couldn't get my voice. I said, are you, are you crazy? He said, no. He said, I want to get involved in winning people to Jesus. And uh, his wife had already passed on. He, went, he said, I said, Philip, you know what you're going to do? You're going to send something on the head with John Inland. Uh, he looked at me. He said, Jackie, why didn't I do this a long time ago? I said, I don't know, Phil. I didn't know, Phil. But I'm glad a preacher named his pastor walked slowly through the crowd. I'm glad you got a preacher tonight that walks slowly through the crowd. You ever thank your preacher for what he does for you? You ever write him a note, lie to him, tell him you love him? That's a joke. I wish my preacher was here tonight. I wish Lester Roloff was here tonight. I'd shine his shoes. Matter of fact, they had a guy who used to shine his shoes. He said, boy, can you read colors? <laughs> he had alligator shoes. Don't you put no black polish on my brown shoes. I wish Jack Howes was here tonight. All my heroes are gone. It won't be long. Me and Brother Baby be gone. We'll be gone. You're the next generation. I don't have the preaching voice I used to have, but my, I'm dried up. I'm driving all day. But uh, I'm, ready, I'm ready for tomorrow to go and preach at that mission all week. It's about 40 men. I'm expecting something. I've been expecting some of them to get saved. I'm expecting some of them to go into ministry. I'm expecting some of them to go back home and make things right with mom and dad. I'm expecting that. But they can't get it just in going there and wiping the snow. Hey, 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 rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep those doggies rolling raw high. Get them up, move them out. See, that, that, that's not the ministry. That's walking slowly through the crowd. Just like the preacher does to you. Remember, remember how somebody came to you? That came to you. I don't know how long we have our freedom in this country. It's getting dark. If you, if you think this country is light as it used to be, you, no, no, no. It's getting dark, dark. And it's planned. It's planned. That's all I'll say. But if I can encourage you tonight, an old cripple preacher tonight, man, I can't believe I'm 70. Man, I, I really can't. I, I, I used to laugh at people at 70. Hey, man, you old timer, come over. No, I'm there. 
My wife said, are you going to stay home? I said, what, stay home and die? Said, well, send me a check. <laughs> and uh, no, I asked my woman, hey, are you going shopping again? You better hurry up. I'm spending your money. And uh, I, got a, I, got a, I got a wife with some spunk to her. And uh, the other day I was talking to her, and she was mad at me. She said, just talk to the hand, okay? Just talk to the hand. It's in the Bible somewhere. So I'm, but, but I'm still looking for it. Women get that. Come on, women. Come on now. And uh, my wife's got five syllables in hello, you know. And uh, she's from Kentucky. But uh, I love, she's a little spitfire of a girl. And we got 19 grandkids. None of them go to public school. Three of them want to go on the mission field already. One to pilot at 15. We put something on the inside, not on the outside. The problem with America is not the, it's not the red hair or the green hair. That's a symptom. That's a symptom. The problem on the inside. The anger, they, they're looking for help. They want some and, and just get a hold of them. I mean, I, I seen Lester roll off witness. The people at the, at the courthouse would cuss him out. Well, you know, you're talking like your father's the devil, but I, Jesus told me to come and set you, he'll set you free, boy. The guy would get on his knees, start crying, but Lord, leave me Christ. I wish I had that Christianity. But I'm learning it. You know what we need tonight? We need churches like this that don't get over what happened to you. Keep an eye on that preacher right there. Protect your preacher. Look out after him. Protect him. Protect him. Protect. I used to protect Dr. Howell physically all the time. He said, Jack, I want you to watch my back. You know what you're doing. I said, well, you're walking through the alley. I grew up in the alleys. And uh, he said, tell me about those guys. I don't tell you about those. He always wanted to know about those guys I knew on the streets. I said, no, they're crazy. And uh, but I, I went back before a judge one time years ago. This is funny. But I went in front of the courtroom, and the, and the guy kept looking at me like this, you know. I was about, 20, I got saved when I was about 18, and he kept looking like this in, in the courtroom. He said, he said, do I know you, young man? I said, uh, yes, sir. I said, uh, I had to come in here for another uh, court case or something, and I just want to come sit in your courtroom. He said, uh, didn't you stand before me a couple of years ago? I said, yeah. He said, didn't you have on a, like an a, a orange silk shirt on or something? Said, yeah, 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 I did. And, 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 and bright green pants with white shoes. Oh, man, I was a sight to behold, man. Tom Jones, Jr. And uh, he said, well, what happened to you? I said, Your Honor, I said, uh, he said, well, come on down, come on down. I said, oh, brother, you know how lawyers are, judges. So he, I stood right there. He said, well, what are you doing? He said, I just, I just come and see a friend. I said, I said, I really come and say thank you. I said, you let me go. I never forgot it. He said, I'm that, I'm that, I'm that kid. And I talked you out of it. He was going to put me in jail. I said, you'll let me go to this courtroom, and you'll never see me again. He never did to that day, a couple years later. And he jumped up, and I went up and gave him a big hug. If I'm lying, I'm dying. I walked out, and he said, Jack, go on and do something with your life. Well, 52 years in the ministry, up or down, in or out, I've never quit. I've never quit. I want to finish well, but I can't do it fast. I got to look him in the eye. Lonely voices crying in the city. Lonely voices crying in the night. Lonely voices do I hear. Lonely voices haunt my memory. Lonely voices do I see. Lonely voices do I hear, lonely people do I see. I see them in the gas stations. Cars just drive on by. Hey, you crazy fool, well, get your clothes on. Well, they don't, what, what are you going to put clothes on? A dead, dead person, they're dead. They need light, the light of the world. They need someone to stop and give them a track. Maybe buy them a bath. You got to see your daughter sitting out there. You got to see your son sitting out there. It's quiet tonight. You got to see your homosexual son sitting there. You got to see your daughter with a prostitute. That's who Brother Olaf helped. That's what he passed on to me. What he passed on to other people. Your, your preacher has a tear for that. You know what you need to do tonight? Say, Lord, don't. Uh, you want know to you know tell God, Brother, Brother Beatty? Lord, save me from my ministry. Lord, save me from my ministry. I don't, I'm not a great preacher. I just want to be a, a, a good, saved sinner by the grace of God. I don't fight Christians. I leave them alone. I want to kill them, but I just don't fight them. 
I like to poke their eyes out in Jesus' name. <laughs> Joshua judges and to lose. But that's for the judgment seat of Christ. The Lord will take care of it when we get home. But you don't know about so-and-so. Yeah, we'll, know, we'll work it out when we get home. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Let, let the Lord take care of it. You need, you need to gear up and don't be like the guy in Columbus, Ohio, who was, who was a, 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 a famous person in the city. I won't tell you who it was. Don't ever call me again about that girl. I'm done with her. Click. But he was one of the leading officials in Columbus, Ohio. I'm glad I got 15 grandkids that are clean, but so forth. But that ain't the norm. I go to these churches. They're already calling me right now. I already got called today. Hey, I heard you opened back up. Would you take my grandson? I said, well, yeah, give me a couple, give me a couple months, okay? Let me, let me get my legs back. That's why I'm taking my weight off. Man, I was so hungry the other day. Man, I'd, stand, I'd, I'd put a snake in. I'd, I'd suck anything down. Pineapples, apples, potatoes, prunes, or something. But I just, I just don't eat that stuff no more. But I just want to finish my race. But I'm so tired of people just passing people by. They're passing them by. That's somebody's son. That's somebody's daughter. That's a pastor's son. I'll tell you this, I'm going to and Y'all listen real good. I was at a gas station many years ago. Over to Karen, she's a little you know, fidgety. We got to go. Come on, just hurry up. And get on. The girls want to get in the motel, get the air on, you know, and chill out, you know. And uh, I said, I want to get the motel and go get some fried chicken for you, baby. I mean, now it's, you know, a health chicken if you can find it. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, I'm in there getting a tire gauge. And I said, I need to get this tire fixed. And so I go in there on the trailer and go in there. And, and there, lo and behold, there's this guy. I, I know he's got about two feet of hair. And I want a cap on him so bad. I'm just laughing. But what made me laugh, only he had about 15 pieces of jewelry in his face. I didn't know if he had a tackle box or a magnet on his face. I don't know what he had. But he had magnet in his forehead. And it's funny to look at. I'm just like looking at him and like, oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm laughing. You know, I, want to I like to have a good time with people. But, you know, my, this dude with the tackle box. And, uh, and I go, look over there. He said, what are you looking at? I said, man, how do you get all that jewelry on your face? And so he started laughing. It went into, he didn't get offended, you know, and so forth, you know. And uh, he got the hair about that long, and he said, uh, he said, I said, what do you need? I said, I need a uh, gauge to check my tire. He said, go out there, I'll help you, man, and so forth. I said, well, I, I said, no. He said, hey, I said, you're a preacher? I said, well, I told my other preacher, yeah, I'm here, and uh, I'm out doing some stuff. He said, go out there. He said, uh, he said I'll, I'll take care of you. And uh, he comes out there, you know, he be bopping around. He's checking my straps, and he's uh, wanting to know if, uh, uh, is your engine, you, I said, you, uh, I mean, I wanted to check my oil. I said, oh, yeah, I want you to check my tires, my air and my tires. I got to get out of here. I want to get out of there, man. And this dude, and so uh, he kept looking at me. He said, man, he said, you're, you're a funny guy. You know, you're, 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 yeah. I said, what do you want, man? I, I just want to get, I just want my air and my tires. I got to go, okay? And my wife's laughing, you know. He's wanting a conversation. And the Lord said, okay, boy, go after him. Slow down. Slow down. You move too fast. I said, tell me about you. He said, well, you know, well, you know, no, I don't know. Tell me. Now I'm getting serious with him. Am I the only sinner in here? Hello. I see the halos on your head. You're right. He said, no, I'm a pastor's son. I said, you're a preacher's son? He said, yes, sir. I ain't seen my dad in two years. He started cussing. I didn't say nothing. You wicked son. You, you shouldn't have ever done that. I said, well, last time you talked to him. He said, about two years. My wife's going. The Holy Spirit, you know. Don't you tell her I said that. I'll deny it. She's probably watching it here tonight. I said, uh, I pulled out my phone, Brother Beatty. I said, hey, what's your number? I put the phone in there. And I was like, hello, an old man. Hello? I said, yeah, this is Brother Patterson. And I didn't want him to know that I called him. But, I, I just, but, but he sees me talking. I said, who are you talking to? I said, I'm talking to your dad. You, you, you called my dad? I said, yeah, you gave me a number. At the house number. And he, the father came on. And I said, this is Pastor so-and-so, Brother Jack Patterson, a preacher. Said, yes, what can I do for you, preacher? Do I know you? I said, no. I said, I got your son here. You, and watch this in the boy. He said, you got my son? I said, is he okay? He said, yeah, we're at the tire store. He's trying to con me to buy some straps or something. I don't know something about something. He started, yeah, him. He's a salesman. And, uh, and the kid's shaking his head like this, you know, and so forth. And he said, uh, and, uh, and I said, what? I said, would you like to talk to him? He hadn't talked to him in a long time. I said, hey, get over here, kid. 
So the kid comes, and I, and I ra literally wrapped my hand up in his long hair. I said, come here, Elvis, get over here. So I, I poured him over his hair, and uh, he said, come on. He tried to shake my hand. I said, no, I, he said, talk to your dad, boy. Be nice to him, too, in Jesus' name. He starts talking to his dad, and about this time, Brother Betty, I saw this. <gasps> he started crying. And I kind of stepped back, let him talk. Yeah, I know, Dad. I know, Dad. Dad, Dad I'm sorry. Dad, Dad, I know, Dad, I got in trouble, and Dad, I got a mouth on me, and so forth. And all these 15 pieces of jewelry in his face. Looked like you fell in the tackle box. I didn't say a word about it. But I saw a lonely kid. Go home tonight, look up the song, Lonely Voices. Come out in the 70s. Mrs. Cameron used to sing it for Brother Olaf. He loved that song. I don't know whatever happened to that kid. But I started leaving, pulling off, and, I, and my other strap broke. Uh, <laughs> when he left, the other one broke. I went back in there the second time. He said, now, nah, what do you need? Like this, laughing. I said, man, my strap broke. I'm going to get me another. He brings out a bucket of straps. I said, where'd you get those at? He said, I got a stash in the back room. Nobody gets these. I'm going to give them to you. Give me a whole bucket of straps. I took him, put him in, a, in my pickup truck, was pulling the trailer. He said, you think you, you said, you, he said to me, so you think you bad. No, no, I know I'm bad. I said, I want to, I want to help you, man. I want to help you. Somewhere in my phone, his number's in there, but I, I got his name. I don't, I always put someone's name in my phone when I, when I talk to him. Walking slowly through the crowd. That grouch at work that you, that you work with and you fight with, they got a burden somewhere. They got a brokenness somewhere. Do something nice for them. Pray for them. Buy them a cup of coffee. Something. Just be nice to them. Hey, I'm praying for you. I mean it. You think, I, you think Brother Patterson does it all right? No, I don't. I get busy going, going. Got to go, got to go, got to go, got to go. And here I, I go to, got, I hate going to truck stops. I see more stuff going on in the truck stops. I used to be a truck driver years ago. Then I go to the rest areas and I see them bumming for money in the parks and so forth. But I got a little jar in my car full of quarters. I, I keep them for the homeless people at the red light. I got, a, I got a, about 100 tracks I keep right there. I train myself to keep them there, the quarters on the tracks. And such were some of you. And the Lord came by your way and brought you a preacher, brought you a light. I'm not the same guy I was 52 years ago. If I was here in your church, I had, a, I had a green hole and a, a five-gallon can. While you were in church, I'm sucking your gas tank out of your tank out there. At the Temple Baptist Church, there was about 5,000 people. I never got caught, but God caught me. I used to get their gas, would sell the gas. Well, yeah, we, we put in a 55 barrel. We were the con artists. That, we were like the Bowery boys, man. And, uh, but I had, a mother, I had a mother who loved me. And my, my mother knew how to cook. She said, Jack, we're having uh, homemade bread tonight. You better be home by 6. It'll be all gone. I'll be there by 5.30. I had a mother who loved me. And then she saw me graduate from Howells Anderson College. I made who's who. I'm still trying to figure out who what's what. But, I, but just sometimes this old boy walks way too fast for the crowd. I got to slow down. I hope the Lord spoke to you about that, something tonight. Go get those grandkids. Go get that grouchy neighbor next door. Be a friend to them. And more don't work, let them use your mower. If it's old, go get, give it to them. Go get you a new one. Anything to keep them out of hell. Bless by our head. Father, thank you for the Bible tonight. Lord, I pray that I wish I could preach it better tonight. And Lord, I'm looking. I'm glad the Lord didn't stop. I'm glad the Lord stopped for a little blind Bartimaeus. Head bowed, eyes closed. You know you're saved. You know you trusted Christ. Well, Jack, I just want to be honest with you. I've been too busy for the crowd. I've been way too busy for the crowd. I've been way bu too busy for myself. I've just been passing people by like everyday things. And the Lord's touched my heart tonight about walking slowly through a crowd. All over this room tonight, all over this room, there's old-fashioned altars open. They're going to stand and sing just a, a song you come down here and just try to just talk to God tonight and come tell them dip, what difference you're going to make in your Christian life for other people. Would you do that tonight? As they play, you do what God tells you to do. Brother Pastor. You know the reason Brother Patterson can tell so many stories about incidents that he's been a part of is because he's invested his life 
He's been out there. He's talked to them. He didn't let them get past him. He walked slowly through the crowd. And that's what we must remember. Sometimes we fail to remember. We, we forget that wherever we're at in life, God's placed us there. In his divine providence, he's placed us where people come across our pathway. And in many instances, we're the only one and the only ones that will ever give them the gospel. And if we miss it, they may die and go to hell forever. That's the reason for many years I've tried to put the emphasis on keeping people out of hell because somebody loved me and my mom and dad enough. On a snowy winter day in a little Volkswagen, they drove up in my mom and dad's driveway, knocked on the door, offered to bring mom and dad to church. Our car was tore up. We couldn't go anywhere and didn't have enough money to fix it. We got in this little Volkswagen and went down to that little basement church you've heard me talk about so many times. That evening, I met the master because somebody came by. Somebody cared. And somebody out there is waiting for us to come by. Somebody out there is waiting for us to give a witness. And the more we give out the witness, the more we want to give out the witness. God's called us for that. And I want to challenge you this week to take this with you. And let's make sure we tell somebody this week about Jesus. Let's don't let it get by. It's easy to think, what will they say? But that's not the question. What does God say? What does God know? Are we doing it? Are we doing it? I want to do it. I want to tell somebody about the Lord. The thing I loved about my dear wife, if I would forget it, we was out together, she'd always remind me. Every time we go through a drive through if I'd forget about handing the person in the drive through window track, I'd feel this slap on my right knee. And there's a, there's a track. She lay a track on my right knee. Hand that to her. Always concerned about souls. You heard me tell the story. I was going to see my daughter in Howes Anderson College. We stopped at a service station to get some gas. And I had to go inside to pay for it. And I don't know, there's 15 or 20 Hell's Angels motorcyclists. I really didn't pay that much attention going in. I paid for the gas, came out, looked in my car, and my wife's not there. I said, well, she must have went to the restaurant. She must have came in, I missed her. I heard something, and I looked over to my left, right in the center of those Hell's Angels motorcyclists was my dear wife handing out tracks. So read this. And I'm thinking to myself, she's going to get both of them killed. But she gave them out. Everywhere she went, she gave them out. She was a witness. She's home tonight. She's in the Lord's presence. And I have no doubt that she's already met multitudes of people that she gave a witness to taught little kids a big part of her life telling them about Jesus and loved them to Jesus and adults everywhere I go in this area still people are saying I'll never forget how your wife used to tell me about Jesus hey I'd rather that be said about me than anything else he sure did love Jesus and here's the deal. If we love Jesus, we'll love the things Jesus loves. And he came down here.
to seek and to save that which was lost. And then he said, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. If anyone else needs to come, we're going to sing one last stanza. Spirit of God speaking to you, would you come down tonight to the altar? I want to thank you for being here tonight. Appreciate your presence in the Lord's house. I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night, Lord's willing. And we're going to have our ushers to come forward tonight. We're going to receive an offering for Brother Patterson. I appreciate him driving down here. And uh, whatever you give uh, tonight will certainly go to him. I never will forget years ago, we was in a large coliseum over in Chicago. And I think it's when, if, if I remember correctly, it might not be, but I, I think it was when there was a push on to get 3,000 people saved that week and baptized. And I was way down on the floor with Brother Patterson and my wife was up in the stand. And Brother Pastor, I'll never forget what she said. With her, she was looking at your back and my back. We were standing there looking at something. I don't know what it was. And she said, I looked down there, said, you all look so much alike. Other than his size, I couldn't tell the difference. Now, I, I considered that. Uh, okay. Because I'm glad to be associated with somebody that loves the Lord and they're big enough to protect me. Now, <laughs> what you give tonight, again, we'll give uh, to him and rightfully so and gladly. So, Father, thank you tonight for reminding us of our responsibility telling others about you. I pray you'll take the money that's given tonight, you'll multiply it many times over, let it go forward faster and more productive than it would under normal circumstances because we're giving it to your man. I pray you'll use it and uh, bless him as he uses it for, the, for reaching souls for the cause of Christ. In Jesus' name.